In this video, I'm going to teach you the trick hook, which looks like this. And I'm also going to teach you how to turn that into a repeater, which just looks like this. And once you know how to do these tricks, if you want to learn more advanced versions of the hook, we do have videos that teach you how to do those, so you'll definitely want to check those videos out. Now, when you start working on the trick hook, the only thing that you really need is an unresponsive yo-yo. So if your yo-yo is coming back up when you pull on it, as you can imagine, you won't be able to perform the hook. So to start this trick, what you want to do is just throw a break away because you want the yo-yo to be sleeping parallel to your body, just like this. And all you're going to do is just whip the string right underneath the yo-yo, and you want it to have a little bit of force because you kind of want it to go over the top of the yo-yo, and then you're just going to interrupt the string with this finger. It'll hook right around the yo-yo and land right in the gap. Now, when you do this, uh, you want to make sure that you are moving the string properly so that it can actually achieve the trick. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to get some action on the string. And all you need to do to do that is when you lift up the yo-yo, you're going to move your hand away from the yo-yo, and that's going to kind of eat up a little bit of that slack. And then you're going to create kind of a smile that hooks right at the end with your hand, and that's what gets that action on the string that you're looking for. Now once you have that, what you need to do next is you need to position your opposite hand in exactly the right place, and that is exactly right next to the yo-yo. So what you want to think about is uh, you don't really want to move your opposite hand too much, and so just position it in a place that's comfortable, and then what you want to do is you want to lift the yo-yo up to a position where it's about even with that first finger on your opposite hand. And again, you want this hand to be really close, because that's going to make it a whole lot easier to land your hook. Now you might also notice that as the yo-yo is coming to its peak, I do lift my hand and then lower it back down as the yo-yo starts to fall so that it matches the height of the yo-yo at all times as the string is coming around to perform the hook. Now in order to get the string in the right formation as you do the whip, what you want to do is halfway through your smile, you want to pull your hand right into your chest, and you'll see that that kind of makes that hoop shape that you're looking for as opposed to the strings being aligned with themselves in the yo-yo, which they then end up just doing a laceration, which is obviously not what we're looking for. Now, if you want to practice this, or if you're not quite sure that you're doing it right, what you can do is just hold on to the yo-yo, and what I would recommend is holding on to the yo-yo like this and putting your finger right over the top of the yo-yo. And then as you whip the string, what will happen is you'll see this U shape right here, and uh, the string will be right over your finger and go right into the gap of the yo-yo, and then the back half of the string will be more around your wrist, just like this. And that's exactly what you want when you actually land the hook. It's going to look like this. And you can see the string is over your finger, and the rest of the string is going right back around your wrist, and that'll show that you're doing it right. Now, um, you can practice it by holding on to the yo-yo. I found that um, once you kind of understand the whip motion and how to split that string to get that right hoop shape, uh, it's just a little bit easier to practice without holding on to the yo-yo, and that way, if you get it right, then you'll actually land the trick. Now, one last thing that you can do as you're attempting the hook is uh, you kind of pay attention to what your yo-yo hand is doing through the motion of the hook. So um, in order to get enough string to go around, you do need to make sure that you are whipping this hand also somewhat close to the yo-yo. Um, but if you notice that time, the string that came around the yo-yo, it was very, very large. And sometimes that can make it a little bit difficult to aim. And so in some cases, what I will do is as the string starts to fold around my hand, I'll actually pull away just a little bit with my yo-yo hand. And what that does is it actually accelerates the string and it shortens the amount of string going around the yo-yo, which will also help you aim just a little bit. Now, of course, if you pull too far away or if your hand wasn't close enough to the yo-yo to begin with, then you won't have enough string going around your finger and it won't even have a chance to get around the yo-yo. So you're going to have to find the right balance for that as well. Once you have actually landed the hook, you are, in fact, in an undermount. And so if you just roll the yo-yo right over this hand and keep it on your first finger, you are now perfectly set up for your bind so you can perform whatever bind you like. Now, one last thing that I do want to mention before uh, getting into the hook repeater is that when you're performing whip tricks like the hook, uh, in order to get the right amount of action out of the string, it's tempting to use all of your power that you have in your arm to whip that string around. But really, it's a little bit more about technique. And so if your technique is good, you can actually use a little bit less power after uh, probably about 20 minutes. You'll feel your shoulder get sore, and so you kind of want to balance things out. Now, when you want to do the hook repeater, 
there's a couple of things that you have to manage while you're doing this trick. And the fact that it's set up in undermount and ready to bind, you also need to contend with that. So let's kind of break this down step by step. Once you have the yo-yo set up in the hook, in order to actually perform the second hook, you also want the yo-yo raising up. But in order to get out of the hook, you have to drop the yo-yo. And so when you drop it, uh, obviously the yo-yo is going to go down. And so what you want to do first is you want to be lifting the yo-yo up as you drop it. And you can see you can get just a little bit of height on the yo-yo when you do it that way. Now the second thing that you want to do is, even though you're dropping it with your first finger, you do kind of want it to stay around your wrist just a little bit. Because what you're trying to fight against is getting too much slack in the string when you drop it. And so when you are attempting to land your hook repeater, if you find your yo-yo is constantly binding like that, then most likely you're allowing too much slack in the string. Again, the first thing you want to do is you want to be lifting up, and then as you drop the slack off of your finger, what I typically do is I kind of push my finger to the uh, inside a little bit, and that pushes the string around the yo-yo. And then I will try to leave the string on my wrist just a little bit longer as I lift my hands up. And then the final thing that you want to do is as you're doing your hook repeater, uh, you, you don't exactly mirror the exact same motion that you did with your hook. Because if you do that, then it leaves too much slack near the yo-yo and the yo-yo will respond just like you saw. And so you actually need to make your motion just a little bit bigger. And then the other thing that I've noticed is you need to start your motion with your yo-yo hand a little bit sooner than you might expect. So even as you're lifting the yo-yo up, you kind of start the motion right there. Again, go a little bit wider than you might anticipate. That'll eliminate some of that slack. And then you can hook the yo-yo just like normal. You might need to put a little bit more speed on it than you would for a typical hook, but that will definitely get the job done. And uh, just like any repeater, this trick can be done again and again and again. Now, when you are practicing the hook repeater, one thing that you're going to notice if you're right-handed is the string is going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. And so you definitely want to manage your string tension because if your string has too much tension in it, that will also cause it to bind unexpectedly. And so you're going to have to be loosening your string every now and then as you're practicing. Obviously, the opposite is true. If you're left-handed, you're going to need to be tightening it because the string will be getting looser as you practice the trick. So that's how you do the trick hook and the hook repeater.